Okay, you guys, let's talk about February. So, um, I've kind of been keeping a couple of things from you, and it's because I needed time to process what I was feeling about what went down in February. So, if you have been following my journey for a while, I was, um, in a pretty rough spot in January, just feeling like my doctors didn't know what to do with me. And at that point, tests had been coming back normal and um, we were just at a standstill and I was really frustrated with my doctors. And so I decided that I was gonna take a medical break um, and not book any appointments. But kind of felt like the Lord had a different idea, which I was, I'm super grateful for looking back on. February, but February ended up being the most chaotic medical month that I have had yet. So, um, in January, so how it works here in my province is when a doctor books you for a test or for a follow-up, um, typically you get a letter in the mail, um, uh, and that it can be like decently short notice or you could be waiting for months at a time. And so I had received a couple of letters in the mail in January um, for the beginning of February. One was for a follow-up and the other one was for my CT. And so um, my follow-up, we ended up rebooking that one because we wanted to be able to discuss the results of the CT. And so we went ahead and did the CT and I said, that's it. That's all that I'm doing for February other than my bioresonance. Um, therapies because that is treatment for my endometriosis and so I was going to move forward with only those therapies. I had cancelled everything else and didn't book any other doctor's appointments until March. But the CT ended up showing something pretty big and I got booked for more appointments and things just got pretty crazy. So for a while now after so many tests have been coming back normal, something in the back of my mind has been telling me we should be looking into compression syndromes. And I was like, no, there's no way. Like, uh, they're, they're super rare for one. And I just feel like I'm not bad enough to have a compression syndrome. Um, but I have been looking into a couple of doctors in the States um, that did deal with compression syndromes. And so I ended up having my CT and I ended up having my follow-up pretty shortly after that. And the results of the CT were showing possibility of SMAS and Nutcracker Syndrome. So at the time, my doctor didn't want to um, say that I had either of those things. Um, but she booked more tests, um, to look into it further. So I ended up having a barium swallow, which the barium swallow did come back normal, but something just wasn't sitting right with me. And so I had gone ahead after my CT before getting the results of those tests. And I booked this appointment with this doctor in the States who deals with compression syndromes because we don't have specialists here in my province for compression syndromes. And I just really felt like this is something we should look into and my CT findings just kind of confirmed that for me and so after my barium swallow I was like okay well um, at this point we just have to wait to see this doctor in the states and see what he says and so I had my appointment with him um, it will be in a later vlog revealing my thoughts and feelings leading up to that process and the process itself um, the appointment went very well, and he highly suspects that I have MALS, SMAS, and then because of the findings of the CT, we don't know, but there is a high possibility that I also have Nutcracker Syndrome. So at this point, um, I think the only one that is possibly completely confirmed is SMAS. So in my consultation with this doctor in the States, I had all of my tests sent over to him and he discussed the findings right in front of me and he said that he discussed what a normal um, angle is supposed to be and 
discussed what mine was and it fell well within the parameters for SMAS. And so in my mind, I'm like, okay, so that is a high possibility, like almost completely confirmed. Um, but he does have other tests that he wants to run to confirm MALS. And it sounds like my GI has some tests in the running to um, send me to a urologist to look into Nutcracker Syndrome. Okay, so, pause just for a sip. These were all big findings, big findings, because not only are we looking into one compression syndrome, we're looking into three compression syndromes. And having a compression syndrome in itself is already really overwhelming to think about, but thinking about having three of them has been really hard to process. Um, so I'll get into what these compressions even are, but first I wanted to share my feelings about finding these things. The first one was re relief that I wasn't crazy and that my tests were finally showing something that was completely in line with the symptoms that I had been experiencing. And I was just relieved that I wasn't crazy. And then um, after seeing this doctor and everything, um, like in the states and stuff and getting reports back to book these tests here in Canada since then I have felt very overwhelmed because in my province we don't have specialists who deal with compression syndromes and so trying to find a doctor who is willing to book these tests and able to has been an absolute nightmare um, and that has been very stressful for me knowing now that we have to look into possibly a third compression that we don't have specialists for here is kind of unnerving it's like in my mind i just keep tacking on years of how long this is going to take but at the same time i feel like it's been challenging me to trust that god can do things that are impossible and there is still a chance that i don't have these but there's a pretty high probability and um, I wouldn't have even gone down this path if I hadn't felt um, the Lord pressing me to look into compression syndromes and having tests coming back showing that this was a high possibility. And so here we are. So what is a compression syndrome? So there are multiple com compression syndromes and they are quite rare and the rarity of them depends on which ones you have. So, um, as I mentioned, we're looking into MALS, which stands for Median Arcuate Ligament Syndrome. So that is when the median arcuate ligament is pinching off the celiac artery. And so the celiac artery is in charge of sending blood to your abdominal organs. And when that's pinched off, you'll be having all kinds of pain and nausea and inability inability to eat and um, weight loss and stuff like that and so that is a high possibility linked to my symptoms especially because even wearing bras and pants are extremely difficult I literally just put these on for this video and um, I have tons of pain I have tons like I can hardly go without a heating pad at this point um, I have burns like on my abdomen from heating pads because the pain is just way too much without a heating pad. Um, my eating has gone drastically down where I am literally just nibbling throughout the day on small things that I enjoy. I have completely put nutrition out the window because um, anything that has some sort of nutritional like component to it. I can't eat enough of it to even get it to sustain me and even just eating those things make me feel so sick and so I have just been relying on foods that don't make me feel as sick but they also aren't as nutritionally balanced as other foods. Um, so that's probability number one and 
then the tests were showing um, SMAS, so that's superior mesenteric, sorry, just a sec. Superior mesenteric artery syndrome. Yeah, there we go. Um, so that one is when the aorta and your superior mesenteric artery, so it makes kind of like this V and your intestines and your renal veins sit in between them. And there's typically a fat pad that sits in between here holding that open. And um, it can occur in people who are very tiny like me. Um, or people who have lost a significant amount of weight, but that fat pad can shrink and cause a compression in the duodenum and the renal vein, which causes SMAS and nutcracker syndrome. Um, so again, the symptoms completely fall in line with um, these compression syndromes. That is grounds for um, SMAS. And so, um, that one, we are hoping um, to be able to regrow the fat pad to increase the angle and the distance. And I don't really know anything about nutcracker syndrome at this point. My body has all kinds of pain and nausea and inability to eat for quite some time. And so there's a lot of things that need to be done. First off is I need one of my doctors to um, be able to book the tests that my doctor in the States needs to confirm MALS and confirm 100% SMAS. Um, and then from there, we would be moving on to a MALS surgery and hoping that we don't need an SMAS surgery on top of that because those are both really big surgeries, especially to have to travel to the States for those um, would be First off, extremely expensive, and second, it would just be really difficult if there were complications. And so at this point, there are just a lot of things that we're processing, which is why I took my time to like share these things with you. I'm probably gonna like completely cut up and edit certain parts of this because there are certain parts I'm just not ready to share. And so it's really just a big wait on me to try and figure this out. Um, here in my province when you don't have specialists is so frustrating and just trying to keep my body standing. I'm so tired. I can't eat anything and it's really hard because my doctors, they don't know what to do with me. They have expressed that. They don't know what to do next and um, that's really hard to hear from your doctor because you're looking to them to be able to help you and when they are like sorry I don't know what to do that is so hard and they recognize that my case is complicated and complex and they're frustrated along with me that there isn't someone that they can just send me to to figure this out um, here in our province but it's going to be a long journey and so I'm gonna need all of the prayers that I can possibly get because this is gonna be long. I was hoping that it wouldn't be, but at this point, um, I just got a letter in the mail for when I can see my GI next, and that's like end of April, and I'm filming this currently at the beginning of March, and I need to get these tests booked, and I can't, like, until my GI or somebody is able to book them. So, I'm feeling a little bit defeated, but I'm trying not to lose heart because I know that God is able and that we will get through this. But I just wanted to share that along with the process of this video, all of it. Um, and I wanted to share about these syndromes, even if I end up not having them, because they are rare and they deserve awareness because people don't know about them. My doctors didn't know about them. Um, my GI had only seen like five cases and this is why we need to know about them so that people like me who have been struggling to eat and have been told that it's all in their head 
because all the tests are coming back normal, there are other people out there who are struggling with the same things and I just really want to walk alongside them by providing this video and my process of how we got from point A to diagnosis because it is a rough journey and I've been walking alongside quite a few other people for all kinds of different diagnoses because I know how hard it is to get them. Um, but yeah. Sorry about the lighting, but this is Nikki of the future who's editing this and I just wanted to say I will be putting up a separate video that is vlog style of me going through the process of booking tests and everything like that. So be on the lookout for that. Um, don't forget to give this video a like. Um, it really shows me your support and that you enjoy my content. And if you would like to continue to follow along on my journey, then I would highly encourage you to subscribe. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Mm -hmm.